Men, stop dating women if you're broke. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. Stop dating women if you're broke. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about, right? See, there's a pattern in a order to things if you want to date a woman of your the date date the woman of your dreams. And that is a biblical principle that we find in Genesis 1 and 2. First, the male has to go and have his kingdom set up before he can invite that queen into his life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We have way too many young people that, especially males that are broke, don't have a job, don't have a car, don't take care of themselves, don't even take showers, don't get out of bed until 1 p.m., play video games all night, and they expect to land or to have the woman of their dreams be drawn to them. No, no, no. You're going to attract the wrong kind of woman. And women, you know what I'm talking about, right? You can't settle for someone who doesn't have his kingdom or his stuff together. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. The way that God designed the, uh, the, the order of things is, as I said, fall, uh, found in Genesis 1 and 2. Adam and Eve, the first thing that God told Adam is go and be fruitful. Go and conquer the land. Go and rule the world. The man first, in order to have a family, a wife, a girlfriend that is that that he deserves and that she deserves, has to first get his kingdom right. Now, before you set up that kingdom, that man has to go to, through two more steps. First is intimacy with God. You can't build a kingdom of God unless you're filled with God. If you're filled with the world, you're going to build a kingdom of this world to Satan, basically, and to his priorities. But if you have intimacy with God, then you will be assigned a kingdom from God. And we see this in Genesis 1 and 2. It says that Adam walked with God in the dew of the morning. And that's where it all began for Adam. It was that morning, that daily walking with God that enabled him and empowered him to have his own kingdom and then to have Eve join that kingdom. Second is a man has to then seek the wisdom of God, not of this world. The wisdom of this world will tell you to be all about money, about success, about your looks, about how awesome you are, about how successful you are, that you have to only look for the woman that has the perfect body or that is going to make you happy or that you have to or that you're going to lose your, your life unless you have that woman of your dreams, or the kingdom of this world will tell you the opposite, that you're worthless, that you don't deserve anything, that you're not handsome enough, tall enough, rich enough, you name it, or spiritual enough. And so that's the wisdom of the world. But the wisdom of God says, fear me, seek me first, and everything else will be added onto you. That's the wisdom of God. And once again, we see that in Genesis 1 and 2. It says that Adam and Eve were told that they could eat of every tree of the, the Garden of Eden. Every tree was available to them except for the, the tree of wisdom, or the, the tree of the knowledge between right and wrong. And that was the only thing that, that Adam had to keep away from was disobedience, to pursue his own wisdom. And so, as we know, though, he was tested. The woman went and ate of the tree that was about wisdom, wisdom of this world. And so then she came and gave that fruit. It doesn't say that it's an apple, but we call it an apple. But he gave Adam that fruit from the tree of the knowledge of wisdom. And then the man ate and he fell for the wisdom of this world. He defaulted or he gave up the wisdom of God for the wisdom of this world. And that's when he fell. And that's why he had to then go through a whole mess of things before he could regain his kingdom, the kingdom that he originally had. And so you have to, as a young man, not only first you have to walk with God, but second is you have to seek the wisdom of God and to deny the wisdom of this world. And then third is then you have to go and work the land. After Adam and Eve and after uh, this, this first couple fell, you know the story. It says that God was, or they were ashamed of themselves, of their nakedness. That was both a wisdom, spiritual, and physical nakedness. And shame is the tool of the enemy. So if you're dealing with shame, you have to resist that and say, Satan, get behind me because it's not of God. But in the grace and the mercy of God, it says that they cover their nakedness with leaves from the Garden of Eden. And then eventually God gave them actual 
um, like you could say almost like a, a leather outfit, skins to cover their nakedness, most likely from animals. So there was a first sacrifice there that we see. Once the man of God was reestablished, was forgiven, he fell, but then he was restored by the blood of Jesus. And that's the third step, is if you are in a place where you have fallen, you have to now come under the grace and the blood of Jesus. This is the time for you to say, Lord, I need you. I fell, I, I, can I, I fell off the wagon, I got back into my addictions, into porn, into dating women, and sexual promiscuity, or depression, and not taking care of myself, giving into negativity and my emotions, and not being a strong man, not being a man of God that I'm supposed to be. If you fell, remember that the grace of God covers your sins. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. Come back to church. Begin to worship. Begin to give. Begin to honor God. Begin to show up at church and discipleship groups. Begin to get rid of those sinful friends and people that have been taking you down the wrong path and begin to hang out with strong Christian men and women who will help you to get back on track. So that's the third very important step. Once those three things are in place, then God told the man to go and rule the world, to go and build his kingdom. And how is it that he's going to build his kingdom? How was it that Adam built that kingdom here on earth? He had to do it from the sweat of his brow. And with his own hands, he had to work the land. And that's the, the final piece. If you want to have the woman of your dreams, you have to work for it. You have to go and get a car, get a job, have some money in the bank, be able to pay for dates, for dinner, for gas, take a shower, be responsible, show up on time to your, to your, to your work, have your boss give you an A plus as a review in your first year, second year, third year, no matter where it is, see yourself move up from the bottom of the, of the, la of the ladder to the top of the ladder, see your career, your money, your income grow and increase from from the first month to the third month to sixth month. That's what the woman is looking for. She's not looking for riches. She's looking for you to be stable and to be growing in your responsibility, in your strength, in your mind, physically, that creates wealth because wealth means safety. It means that you are worthy and you have the financial stability to have her children to establish a home. She doesn't have to worry about those kids not having food. And you may say, well, I don't want to have kids. Well, the woman in instinctively, I'm not saying that this is what everyone has to do, wants to be a mother, wants to have a family. It's what they see, especially for us Hispanics. It's what we've seen, even if there's pain or difficulties, or and obviously there can be all kinds of things that get in the way. But the most, most people, we want children. But that woman is not going to give you that, that baby, that child, if she's seeing that you don't have money or a car to take, to drive to, the, to Ralph's or to the store to buy some diapers and formula for your baby. And even if you're already kind of in a difficult situation, in a mess, it doesn't mean that that lady's happy, that that young lady is happy with you. She still is watching you. Are you getting up in the morning and looking for work? Do you look presentable? Are you serving a church? Are you ushering? Are you giving your tithes and offerings to the church? That's what she's noticing. Because if you're responsible in the house of God, she can trust you for, the house, for her own house. If she can see that you're responsible at work, even though you might don't like that job, it doesn't pay you enough, blah, blah, blah. But if she sees that you aren't complaining, that you are stable, that you are pursuing greatness, then she will trust her children that she's going to bear. She's going to carry, remember, these kids in her body multiple times, maybe two or three times, maybe once. She's going to trust you with those babies to feed them, clothe them, bathe them, be with them, care for them, provide the income, the income, the income, the love, the support, the stability, an apartment, a home, a crib, a bed for those children to be happy and so that they can grow up to be amazing members of society and members and, and amazing members of, of the house of God, most of all. So she's looking for you, young man, to become this king and ruler of your own life. You take care of your car. You, you have a car. Now you've been through problems. Well, you get back up. Just like that third step, you fell from grace, you took the wrong apple, you, you gave in to the knowledge of this world, 
the blood of Jesus. But it doesn't mean that you're going to just now become this monk and just simply now pray all day or just be an, a good Christian that serves in the, in the, in the kids' ministry or plays in the worship band. It means that you establish your financial, your physical, and your mental kingdom. And you have strength in all three areas. Physically, that you look fit, that you look strong. A woman is looking for a man with that V shape back because it's not about just looks. It's about physical strength. You can carry those babies on your back. You can take them to the park and not get tired. You're not out of breath because you're maybe not fit or you're not working out. Mentally, she can trust that you will take care of her babies because she sees that you're not angry. That you're not giving to addictions, depression, anxiety, or to hate. That you have a strong mental capacity to love and be patient with those little babies. And with her, most of all. That you will have the mindset to love her. That you will have the physical ability to pick her up if she falls. To defend her from some crazy creep at the, in a dark alley. That's what a woman is looking for. It's not about you being rich or you being successful. Or you having a lot of Instagram followers. Nor is it about you as being a Christian and playing in the band. It's about you having your kingdom established and that you can uphold that kingdom and sustain that kingdom for 30, 50, 70 years. <laughs> and so you have to have, and then, of course, you have to have your spiritual kingdom well established. This is the foundation to everything, that you are a, a, a praying man. That you are a man who serves in the church, who leads discipleship groups, who leads Bible studies, who isn't giving in to other people, who isn't weak, letting women or weak men rule over you. But that you as a male, you take your rightful place in whatever you're doing at church. She wants to see you be able to lead your spiritual family so that she can trust you with her own spiritual family with her own kids, with her own spiritual life. Remember, the Bible says that we got to love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So the woman, that, that woman that you're dating, that you want to marry or that you're wanting to, to go out with, she's looking at you spiritually. Does this man have what it takes to lead me spiritually? Do I see that in his life with his friends at church, the way he interacts with people around do people respect them spiritually physically mentally emotionally most of all another very important thing does this man have the emotional intelligence to know when to say and when not to say something to know when to speak and when to be silent does he have the emotion he's not she's not looking for a perfect man so it's not about perfection but it is about a man who has an established kingdom when and if you do that, you will have a queen join your kingdom and you will establish an amazing, godly, spiritual kingdom that will last forever. And your, and your descendants, meaning your kids, will see that in you and in your mom and they will say, I want to be just like my dad. I want to be just like my mom. I want to have my own kingdom when I'm 12 and 14 and 15 and 18. And this is the opportunity that we have to establish our kingdom through biblical principles, not money, sex, how many women, how many men, is he, does he make me laugh, is he cute, is he, those are just, those are fun things. I'm not saying those are evil things, but that's not what a woman is looking for. A woman is looking for you to have your kingdom established, again, to first have intimacy with God, second, that you are seeking the wisdom of God, third, that when you fall, you, you come under the blood of Jesus, and fourth is that you go and work the land, and you establish a physical, material, spiritual, mental, emotional kingdom that is strong and healthy and growing, and you will see your life. You know, people say, a lot of both men and women say, oh, I, I always end up with the wrong kind of guy. No, 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 you're drawing someone who's just like you. You are the one who is, quote, manifesting, as crazy people call it these days. Really, all that means is that you're drawing, attracting people just like you. But if you grow in all these areas, you're going to say to that person who is not at that level, you're going to say, no, I'm, I don't need that. But even better than that, as you as a man come into your own in all of these areas that we're talking about, the queen of your, of your home will arrive. And you will see her. So what happened with my wife? I thought, oh boy. And she saw me and she said, oh boy. And we locked eyes. 20, 30 years later, here we are. 
helping young people just like you. That's what you want. Legacy, continuity, a beautiful family, a pack like the lions have, right? What do they call it? A, uh, a pack of lions and they have another, another beautiful word for, for, uh, for lions when they come together. You want to have a, a kingdom where the lion and the lioness and the little cubs can feel safe, can be provided for, <clears throat> can be established now, as humans, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, so that you can withstand the lies of the enemy. This is not a joke. This, this, this life has a ton of problems and temptations and all kinds of worries and, and loneliness and challenges that are bigger than us. But if we, if we establish our foundations now, when then you will have a wonderful opportunity to succeed. When do you start? You start at birth. You start, if you're 18, 25, 35, you start today. If you've been on this journey, you partner with people that will encourage you to continue to persevere and to continue to climb. I don't mean financially per se, but that you continue to be the man that God has called you to be according to the biblical principles that are in Genesis 1 and 2. If you're now someone my age, you're now discipling, mentoring. You should have 5, 10, 20 people that are following you like little babies that are saying, I want to learn from you. If you are my age and you don't have that, you need to do some more work and keep saying, God, change me, help me to mold my character because young people are looking for mentors everywhere we go. I'm so excited that young people today are looking to establish their kingdoms before they start dating or getting a girl pregnant or being in the back room making out with a girl they like. And I'm more excited that young girls are looking for the right man who is spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally strong or growing. Again, not perfect, but growing, moving in the right godly direction, not worldly direction, not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom of God, because they want to be a part of something great, of a spiritual empire that will create wealth, greatness, disciples, spiritual uh, spiritual strength, and churches that are thriving, and homes that are doing well, and when the tough times come, you then have that foundation in Jesus to persevere, to weather the storm. That when, those, that, when that rain and the wind comes, that your house will, will withstand the, the test of time because your, your house is built upon the rock. And we see many people that have built their relationships on sand. You see them, your friends, maybe your parents, maybe you have done that. It's time for you, young man, young lady, to live by biblical principles. And if you aren't there, then this is the time to say, I need help. I need to be around mentors like me and others, coaches, life coaches, spiritual leaders, pastors and people that you admire or that you simply want to be around to learn from so that you can get your life and your kingdom right. And to really have a, a life of joy and gozo, as I call it, a life that is that is that is attractive, especially to that young lady. And if you are in a relationship already, remember this is what she wants. She may not say it, but guess what? This is exactly what she wants. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about, right? And guess what? For us men, this is what we want. We want to be the lions of our home, of our pack, of, of our fold. I forget the name again of, of what the lions are called. We want to be the, the kings of the kings of the of the jungle i don't mean like to be mean or be yelling no 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 i'm talking about we want to have our dreams come true to be worthy of respect and honor to be worthy of being heard the reason why sometimes women and men but i see it sometimes in women become the man in the families because we have weak beta men as i say we have men who, even though our personalities, you might be more artistic, you might be more thinking-driven, you might be more action-driven, you might be more feeling-driven, no matter who you are, you are still called to be the man of the house, the spiritual leader of the house. And when a woman sees that, she's drawn to that. She sees that and she then finds her place right behind, right next to. I don't mean behind in any physical or mental way. I just mean she doesn't want to lead. And the reason why many young people, young women become these little monsters, these little, these little lions that they shouldn't be, they don't need to be, is because their, their fathers maybe weren't 
spiritually leading the families because maybe their previous relationship overdid it and now they have to defend themselves. Being spiritually strong doesn't mean that you boss people around. You ask my wife, I don't boss her around. You ask my kids, I don't boss them around. It's about respect. It's about having confidence. It's about asking for help. It's about saying, I'm going to trust God. Let's go this way, family. I believe that God will show us the way. And then when a woman sees it in the man, then she takes her rightful place as that that perfect A, that soulmate, that ideal complement, instead of being the man of the house. Or the man, when he takes his rightful place, he stops being the woman in the relationship. Always defaulting, always letting other people, especially women that are powerful, let them lead. No, 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 that's not the way God set it up. You as a young lady and you as a young man, take your rightful place in Jesus, not in the flesh, not in your own understanding, not out of ego or machoism or xenophobia or any of these things that are out there of patriarchy, and, but neither is feminism and all these things that I think the world has, has made up as ways, to, as ways to, to basically compromise or to make up for the, for the faults that we have. We can't give in to all these, the wisdom of this world. We have to continue to seek the wisdom of God. Those are all just ways that the, the world has tried to compromise or to, as I said, just kind of make up ways to, to really be biblically minded. But we that have the truth and the light, we don't have to seek the wisdom of God, of, of man. We can seek the wisdom of God. Don't compromise. Don't default on your position in Christ. If you're a young woman and you've taken over the relationship, stop. If you're a man and you're not leading your family, get your act together. And it's not just your relationships at home, at work, in the church, all of these places. We as men need to lead and we and you as women need to be that, that ideal complement, that perfect aid and support to the man. And when this happens, I've seen it over and over again in my own life, in careers, in churches, in the workplace. Life flows and there's blessing and there's shade and fruit for everyone. And everyone gets to eat and be, and be filled with, with, with love and with peace. If you would like to be a part of my coaching program, you can just go to the bottom of this link. We're starting a brand new virtual summit. It is Saturday, August the 6th, so in just in a few days. 10 a.m. It's going to be an hour-long summit where my beautiful wife, Rochelle, and I will be coaching you for 45 minutes or so on some of these basic principles of how to have a biblical relationship with a biblical kingdom that blesses you, your partner, your wife, your kids, and the world in Jesus' name. So sign up at the bottom of this video. It's davidtree.com slash internship, davidtree.com slash internship, and I know you will be blessed. See you inside. Talk to you later.